Run on Less is an event by the North American Council for Freight Efficiency. This year's event will feature profiles of 10 different operations as a means of promoting the transition to cleaner transportation and learning from their experiences. In this video, I'll give a summary of Pepsi and their Tesla semi trucks. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the other videos in this series. I'll also put links in the notes to the people running this event so you can follow them too. Pepsi, you know who they are. The company that makes Pepsi Zero Sugar is starting to operate Pepsi Zero Emission trucks for delivery. Like everything else, Pepsi products require different stages of transportation to get them from the bottler to the shelves at your store. 28% of greenhouse gas emissions come from transportation, and of that, medium and heavy-duty trucking are one of the major contributors. Plus, those vehicles typically run on diesel, which produce NOx that contribute to smog, and particulate matter, which is also harmful to breathe. Simply put, transitioning diesel trucks to cleaner energy sources has huge benefits to human beings. That's why I do videos like this. First, let's take a look at the Pepsi facility. Located in Sacramento, it distributes beverages across all of Northern California. The majority of deliveries involve Class 8 tractors hauling trailers less than 100 miles a day, but involving 8 to 12 stops. The other driver profile involves longer distances, 250 to 450 miles a day. Pepsi says the facility is solar powered. You can see they have panels covering pretty much all of the roof producing 1.2 megawatts of electricity. Energy can be stored on site in a Tesla Megapack, holding 2.4 megawatts of energy. The site operates a number of different electric trucks. For the other trucks, given the quantity of usage, they were able to deploy charging using their existing electrical service. To charge the Tesla semis, however, an additional three megawatts of service was required. You may have seen that Tesla is starting to upgrade their superchargers from V3 to V4. Those public chargers can now deliver up to 350 kilowatts of charging. These are Tesla mega chargers that deliver more than twice that power, 750 kilowatts. Four times 750, that's the additional three megawatts of energy that was requested. These Tesla semis do not use the now famous Tesla NACS plug that all other Tesla cars use. They use a new megawatt plug that is unfortunately not the same as the megawatt charging standard being developed by Sharon and incorporated by other truck manufacturers. So the same battle that is existing right now between CCS and NACS could happen again between MCS and Tesla's megawatt charging plug. Good grief. Pepsi said it took three years to get the site design, permits, infrastructure, grid upgrades, installation of the solar, installation of the mega pack, and installation of the mega chargers. This is part of the reason for doing this challenge, to learn from one another. And planning ahead, years of planning ahead, is essential. Now let's look at the trucks. But before we look at the Tesla Semi, I, I wanted to point out that there are other electric trucks being used at the Pepsi facility. A terminal tractor moves trailers short distances within the facility or to nearby yards. This one is an auto car E-Act. They also use terminal trucks from BYD. I did a video on BYD cars. If you want to check that out, here's the link for it. If your soda machine breaks, they have Ford E-Transit vans that they can dispatch. They use simple level two chargers to charge overnight when electricity is cheapest. They also have electric lift trucks. These are the Pepsi drivers. Next time you crack one open, thank them for the work they do. Some of them you do the early morning shift, which can start at 1 to 3 a.m. And the others do the swing shift in the afternoon. On site, there are 21 Tesla semis. Three of them are dedicated to long haul over the road routes. The rest of them do this shorter, under 100 mile route. Still kind of funny to see the driver seated in the middle of the cab, but it makes sense from a vis visibility standpoint. You might also think that this makes it easy for Tesla to export these big trucks to right hand drive countries like the UK or Japan. 
But this truck is far too big for those countries. Over there, they use cab over trucks due to their dense cities and tight roads. Australia, though, that's a different story. They use big traditional cab trucks like the Tesla Semi. So maybe there'll be another Mad Max movie. I like the last one. We know a lot about the Tesla Semi, but not everything. This event will tell us more about their operating efficiency. Pepsi said they are consistently able to get energy utilization below 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile. That's better than the advertised efficiency from Tesla. The Semi is a tri-motor setup, and it is a tandem truck. That means both of the rear axles are driven and can put power to the road. One motor is constantly providing power, while the other two engage and disengage as needed to provide extra torque. When they're not being used, they disengage to reduce friction. They also bragged about how well Regen puts energy back into the truck. This Pepsi distribution center travels some mountainous areas, including the Donner Pass. Yes, it sucks energy going up, but coming down, it can recover much of it. To deliver its 500 miles of range, the battery is estimated to be about 900 kilowatt hours. That's a big battery. These are renderings that were put online. I cannot attest to their authenticity. If correct, each of these modules could be about 75 kilowatt hours, with the larger center modules being 150 kilowatt hours each. This would allow Tesla to decontent the trucks that don't require the full 500 miles of range to make them cheaper. All indications are, though, that these 21 semis are identical and interchangeable, so they can all do long trips or they can do the shorter trips just as well. I talked about the four chargers on site. Five trucks per charger seems like there would be a waiting line, but these chargers go so damn fast, apparently it works. 20 to 30 minutes charge time to go from 5 to 10% all the way up to 95%. That's what the driver said, so I'm going by their words. Again, that's a better number than what Tesla advertises. This event is run by an independent organization who will hopefully tell us what numbers to believe. That's what we know about Pepsi right now, their Tesla semis in Sacramento. Like and subscribe to this video because there's more information coming on Pepsi and Tesla, as well as all the other participants. It's going to be fun. And check the Run On Less website where you can see all of the profiles, including interviews with the drivers. They work hard. Thanks for watching.